Chances are you've never actually cooked oxtail, in which case you probably haven't even seen one, except, you know, swinging on the back of a cow. Well, this is an oxtail, and it is one of the most wonderful meats for braising that there is. The meat just falls off the bone, there's all this marrow that gets released into the sauce. In fact, I think oxtail just might become the next short ribs. It's a good idea if you have the time to season any meat that you're gonna braise the day before, but a couple of hours ahead is fine too. In addition to salt and pepper, I'm also gonna use a little bit of allspice here, because allspice reminds me of the Caribbean, and oxtail is very traditional in the Caribbean. And now you just wanna cover it and stick it in the fridge. Whenever you do a braise, it's really important to take your time and get a really dark brown caramelization on all the meat. So you wanna do it in batches. The reason that the browning is so important is that not only are you flavoring the meat, but that browning on the bottom of the pan also flavors the entire sauce. And don't forget, when you're doing big chunks of meat, you don't wanna just do the top and the bottom, you really wanna get them on the side too. And now in all these hot pan drippings that I've got, I'm gonna caramelize some shallots, which is gonna give us great sweetness for the sauce. And now I'm gonna add the rest of the vegetables to the pan. I'm using celery root and carrot for this, and I'm keeping them in really big chunks because they're gonna cook at the same time as the oxtail, and the oxtail's gonna take about three hours. So if I cut them in small pieces, they would totally disintegrate. This way you'll actually have some texture left. So you just wanna stir everything around. What you wanna do here is you want the garlic to get a little bit fragrant, and you want the tomato paste to start to toast. And now I'm gonna add an entire bottle of red wine. And lastly, I have a little herb bundle, a bouquet garni. I've got rosemary, I've got parsley, some bay leaf. Really, you could use any herbs that you have. Once the wine has reduced by about half, then you add the meat back in. Then you just wanna nestle them into the, the vegetables. Some of them are gonna stick out on top, and that's fine, because what you wanna do is turn them and kind of rearrange them every 30 minutes or so, and then they're gonna cook evenly. And this should be very tender at this point. You always wanna use a fork, cause you want fork tender meat. Oh yeah. I'm just gonna take all the meat and the vegetables out and then I'm gonna take the fat off the sauce. If you do have time to chill the stew ahead, it's gonna be much easier to remove the fat because it's gonna solidify in this one layer and then all you have to do is scoop it right off the top. And now that the sauce is mostly defatted, there's a little fat in there for richness, I'm gonna add the meat back in just to toss it with the gravy. And now this looks a little, shall we say, brown and stew-like. So I'm gonna add a garnish, both for flavor and for color. So I've made a little mixture of parsley with garlic and some lemon zest. It's called a gremolata, and it is great on all braised meat, actually. And then because I use celery root, I'm just gonna add some celery leaves. They are bright, they are fresh, they are pretty. Now, if I was having a really fancy dinner party, I would take all the meat off the bone and serve people just these big, beautiful shreds of beef. But the best way to eat oxtail is to pick it up and eat it with your hands.